Alrighty, work on the backyard continues. I've worked the dirt a bit, so the next big step is installing the sprinkler and electrical system. For an intricate system like this, it requires a ton of pre-planning. With such a big space like this, winging it is just not an option, nor would it be wise. A complete plan determines the amount of materials I need, which gives me a general idea of the overall cost of this renovation. Everything needs to be mapped out and marked. Luckily for me, I have a survey map of the backyard from the workshop construction. I copied that into Photoshop and got to work. If you aren't familiar with sprinkler systems, they consist of a few different parts. There's a water source. In my case, it's pipes that run through the house into the backyard. The water source goes to the sprinkler valves. Each valve then provides water to a different zone, which shoots water out of specific sprinklers. Now, the valves are turned on and off by a control panel using low voltage wires. So the box has to be somewhere where it can get power. The source pipe can also be used to provide water to garden hose bibs. There will be a few of those added to this plan. I'll be using PVC pipes to run the water underground. The larger the diameter of the pipe, the more efficient water can flow. It's good to go from larger diameters to smaller diameters, but going from smaller pipes into larger pipes will cause pressure drop and prevent sprinklers from working correctly. My source pipe is one inch diameter PVC, so that's where I started. I wanted the valves out of the way as much as possible, while still kind of being in a centralized location. For the size of the yard, if the pipes are too far tucked away in a corner, I'd have to run a ton of extra pipe. I decided on the back wall, kind of behind the gazebo. Now let's talk about sprinklers. You have to decide what kind of sprinklers you're gonna use. There's a bunch of different options based on how far they reach, what kind of pattern and direction they shoot, and what kind of landscape they're best designed to water. In the interest of simplicity, I chose three different sprinklers to use for this whole yard. A medium to large pop-up rotary sprayer, a small to medium pop-up sprayer, and a bubbler for the trees. The bubblers are pretty self-explanatory. The other two are gonna be the focus for a bit. They have the capabilities of shooting to an entire 360 degrees all the way down to a very focused slice of pizza. With that in mind, let's start placing sprinklers. An efficient way to lay out sprinklers is around the edges. You don't wanna be watering the concrete and the best way is to go from the outside end. This is not the first version of the sprinkler system. It went through a few different iterations. Originally, I had a few sprinkler heads in the center of the grass, but opted away from that because it'll be harder to set those at the right height. And it's just better to not have a solid thing to land on in the middle of a grass area. Based on how far the sprinklers could shoot is how I arranged the layout. Each spot in the grass needs to be hit by at least two sprinklers for full coverage. I started with the obvious corners, placing the type of sprinkler that I felt would best fit that spot. I checked the spray coverage for those, then added a few more. A few sprinklers will be around the center brick circle spraying outward. The orange tree and tangerine tree will both get an eight foot diameter planter around the base. Those two trees, as well as the future avocado tree, will each get a bubbler. I added one more medium sprayer just outside the orange tree planter. After playing around with it for a bit, I was satisfied with the sprinkler layout. So now I could move on to zoning. It's important to not put too many sprinkler heads on a zone. If there's too many, the amount of water pressure won't be able to adequately supply them all, and the sprinklers won't work right. I grouped together sprinklers that were close together. If sprinklers are too far apart, you have to use more material. I connected them with lines, which shows where I'll dig the trenches. One by one, I grouped the zones and marked out the trenches. My goal here was to minimize how many trenches I needed to dig. Obviously, each sprinkler head needs to be trenched too, but if I could put multiple pipes in the same trench, then that's hopefully one less trench I need to dig. I allocated five zones for the grass, one zone for the fruit trees, and three zones for future use and gardening. That's nine zones for this backyard. I knew where my source water line is because of previous work back here. So I continued that line to the sprinkler valves. 
I also planned to add several hose bibs, so I marked those out as well. You can never have too many hose bibs around the yard. Just think of all the places for a slip and slide. The left side of the yard has a copper water line, so I'll just continue the copper for the hose bibs on that side. The main blue water line and all the hose bibs connected to it will be one inch PVC. All the pipes for each sprinkler zone will be three quarter inch PVC. Okay, that's it for the water. So now let's plan out the electrical. Just like the hose bibs, it's nice to have electrical outlets in various places. The gazebo has a built-in light that hasn't been powered in years, so we have to bring power out to that. Also, we're planning on putting a greenhouse and shed over in this area, so there should be some power there too. The shed is where the sprinkler control box will eventually end up. When I built the dog run, I added in some underground conduit for future use. This is the future use. This conduit line will run along the side of the yard, then continue into the sprinkler trenches to the gazebo. I'm going to add two waterproof outlets on the left wall, kind of near those hose bibs. The gazebo has an outlet near the light switch, so that'll be powered back up. The electrical will continue all the way to the greenhouse shed area. Now, when we demoed the backyard a few years ago, there was a tall street light. We've held onto it, but it's in pieces and needs some TLC. Eventually, I'll restore it and it'll go in front of the large cypress trees. It'll have its own on-off switch at the gazebo. It'll be a while till I actually add the light in, but I have to run the wiring for it now so I don't have to go back and re-dig later. And that's it. That's the plan. I use this to make a materials list and a general budget. I'll go over that later. Next, I'll be digging trenches and start working on the sprinkler system. Okay, that's it for now. See ya. Get your ball. That's it.